Hey guys, so for today's video I'm just going to show you guys how to load RetroArch onto your AutoBleam hack for your PlayStation Classic. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so here we are. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to download the RetroArch folder uh, for your AutoBleam hack and how you can load that up so that way it's uh, nice and easy. What we need to do is we need to navigate to this website right over here and as always I will leave the link to it in the description down below. When you get to that page you're going to notice that there's two different RetroArch downloads that you can choose. Uh, the first one is just uh, 1.7.5 and then the second one is 1.7.5c. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to download the C version of RetroArch. So we're going to right click on this, we're going to download. It's going to say that the file exceeds the maximum limit that it can scan to make sure that there's no viruses. Do we want to download anyways? The answer to that is yes. Next, I'm just going to save that right to my desktop. And it's about 250 megabytes in terms of size, so it's going to take just about uh, 10 or so seconds to download. Perfect. So now that that's done, I'm going to minimize my uh, Chrome window and I've got my folder or my files right here. Next, we need to extract this into its own folder. So we're going to right click and we're going to extract to its own folder. Perfect. So now that it has extracted and finished, I'm just going to pull it over here. And really quickly, before we go ahead and transfer this onto our USB drive, I do want to uh, chat with you really quick about what's in the build. So when we double click on the folder and we enter into the AutoBleam RetroArch folder again, We've got a RetroArch folder, and then here we're going to go into the .config file, and then the RetroArch folder again, and now we've got our main uh, build where our RetroArch lives. So the big thing that I wanted to mention in here is that if you go over to your overlays, they've actually included a bunch of overlays, so if you want to... Um, have certain overlays over top of your games. For example, like you guys saw in the intro to the video, how I had the um, Super Nintendo overlay displayed over top of the Power Rangers game that I was playing. Uh, it can all be done now because they're all pre preloaded onto this build for you. Additionally, you've got in your databases folder and your RDB folder, the database for all of the major consoles are here already. So that's nice. So if you want to create playlists, they're already there. Keep in mind that none of the thumbnails are there. The thumbnails folder is empty. So if you do want the artwork along with those playlists, you do have to source that artwork and then you do have to load it up by yourself. But yeah, that's pretty much it. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna scroll back and we're gonna go back all the way to the root of this folder and we're just gonna stick it over to the right side. Next, what we're gonna need to do is make sure that our AutoBleam USB drive is plugged into our computer and we've got it on, uh, on screen here. I'm just gonna go ahead and load mine up. So it's right over here and I'm gonna kick it over to the side. Oops, there we go. So as you can see on the left side of the screen, I've got my USB drive and then on the right side of the screen, I've got the RetroArch build. All we need to do is go into this folder, Retro or sorry, AutoBleam RetroArch 1.7.5C, double click, and this RetroArch folder we need to copy over. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and close the folder on the right hand side, and I'm gonna actually gonna move this over to the right hand side. Really quickly, before we do anything else, we need to make sure that we've loaded games onto our RetroArch build or onto our USB drive so our RetroArch console has something to play. Um, before we do that, I'm just gonna double click on the RetroArch folder and in the config.config .config folder and in the RetroArch folder, I forgot to mention that if you double click on the cores, all the pre-existing cores are there. Uh, any of the new cores that you saw me do a video on, for example, the N64 core or the, uh, the Dreamcast core that's to be scheduled to come out tomorrow or later on this evening. Um, whenever that comes out, you guys will be able to transfer that over here. Although the cores are for Bleem Sync, they will still work with um, Auto Bleem. So just keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna go back and we're gonna scroll all the way back to the root of our USB drive. From here, we can double click on RetroArch and you'll see there's a games folder in there already. When we double click on that though, it's empty. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to transfer some games in and I'm just gonna pull up some uh, that I've already got pre-foldered uh, pre for us. 
So I'm just going to switch it over. And again, just like with every other build that we do, all of our games that are Game Boy will be within their own Game Boy folder. Super Nintendo will be within its own Super Nintendo folder and so on and so forth. So we're just going to go ahead and copy them over. Perfect. So now that we've got games on our USB drive and we've got RetroArch uh, on our USB drive, we don't need to do much else. We can go ahead and disconnect our USB and pop it into our PlayStation Classic. I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys what to do next. All right, guys, so now that we're on the AutoBleam main menu, what we can do is uh, you can see on the, the middle of the menu, it says RetroArch, and if you press the square button on your PlayStation Classic controller, it'll switch us in there. So we're going to go ahead and press square now. And perfect. So we know that it's functioning properly because it did load RetroArch, um, and it did look for the RetroArch folder on the root of our USB, which was there. So that's nice. Next thing that we're going to do is you can see over here, we have no games. So because the database folder was already pre-configured and pre-filled, we can actually go ahead and scan the directories that we put our games in. So if we click on scan directory and then we go to our media folder, which will be our USB drive, then we're gonna go into our RetroArch folder and then we're gonna go to games. And then from here, we don't even have to scan each uh, folder individually um, we can actually go ahead and scan the entire directory and it'll pre-sort everything for us so we're going to go ahead and do that now perfect so you can see on the top it says scanning uh, the directory is, is now finished so if we go back you can see now that we've got our directories uh, already set up, our playlists are now there. So we've got our Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. So that's pretty much it though. Uh, we've now got our RetroArch build running on AutoBleam. And then in terms of further configuration, you guys can either check out some of my other videos or you guys can go ahead and play with it yourselves, but uh, it does seem to be working properly. Um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and load up a game just to show you guys. And we're going to run it on the SNES 9X core. And we're going to run. So, uh, I was playing around with it earlier on. I've got the wrong overlay set. As you guys can see, the PlayStation overlay is set. I'm going to press start and select at the same time. And I'm going to scroll down to the on-screen overlay section. And then if we go down to overlay preset and press X, this is where you can then select whatever overlay you want. So I'm going to go ahead and find a Super Nintendo one. There's the Super Nintendo one. I'm gonna press X on it and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna resume my content. And there it is. So now you can see that I've got the Super Nintendo overlay running in the background or on the side of the uh, the ROM, everything seems to run really nicely. The game itself plays really good, but that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you load up RetroArch onto your AutoBleam hack. Please let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys watching very much. Thanks again. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.